I'm doing an update on the progress I've made with uh, Python inside of Unreal uh, using the uh, Python uh, plugin project uh, that you can look at in the previous videos. This is a separate plugin uh, that somebody has written and I'm trying to reach out to the person to see about uh, keeping the progress going. Uh, Unreal has the ability uh, to run Python code in the editor, uh, but right now it doesn't, the, the way I understand it, it doesn't have the ability to run Python code uh, in the, the game itself. So a, a little bit of overview, uh, I have the you know the the simple rolling template here and I uh, when you use the Python uh, plugin you have the ability to create uh, components and you can do a actor you can do a character and you can do a component and originally I was doing this code to where um, I had a, a Python component that had all the Python code in it that I would just add to a regular Unreal character. And that led to some uh, communication issues I didn't want to deal with, which is basically um, uh, potentially controlling, you know, character animations. That's a different project that I'm working on, but for this project, for machine learning, uh, what we want is a, a character, Python character, that has a camera on it, uh, and we want to send the what the camera sees over to the server uh, Python code uh, so we can do some machine learning. Um, uh, with it, uh, some object recognition or path following or whatever we want. First thing we got to have is an image. And I, I know that there's a TensorFlow plugin for um, Unreal. Uh, uh, eventually, I will get around to using that. This is the first stage of, okay, we're going to do everything outside of Unreal and have this little uh, communications bridge uh, between Unreal and uh, Python. So with uh, back full circle with the Python plugin, uh, we can do that. So I'll go over just a little bit what we have is I created a, a, a Python character and when you do that, uh, it will generate uh, the the plugin will generate some code. It'll give you the character, and then you just map your Python module and your Python class, and you're done. So then, what you can do is is you can obviously uh, create your characters and you know control them and, and whatnot. Now, what I've got is I've got a, for this example a camera that's facing outside. And that camera, uh, we're going to grab that uh, picture and we're going to send it uh, to uh, this external uh, server process right here. So uh, in the Python editor, this is the PyChar class, as you can see right here, PyChar class. And uh, the code's modified to... Uh, add this uh, ZMQ rec task and this is running in a this class is running in a thread and I'm just starting to work on the uh, command and control uh, functionality of it which is basically uh, the server app this thing you know with these buttons uh, it can send commands, rotate, whatever, to 
this chunk of code right here, this chunk of code is going to figure out what it needs to do uh, with the uh, command and then it does it inside of uh, this object right here. So it's uh, eventually I'll post this stuff but uh, you know I'm not getting a lot of views. Uh, it's no big major deal. Uh, you know people will have to have the you know Unreal Engine 4.23 installed obviously and then have the uh, get the Python uh, plugin installed, but for people that can get that far, um, and then if I get enough messages, I'll you know post this code and you know go further. But so it, in the PyChar class itself, uh, you can respond. Uh, you know, obviously you can do initialize, and these pre-initialized components uh, callbacks are getting called from the Unreal Engine begin play and play and tick and this is where what we're doing is uh, in the previous videos I uh, may have showed how we grab uh, the screen uh, uh, screen scene capture from that camera that's on our object and then we are going to keep that around and if uh, we get the command uh, to if we have this image and the the thread realizes it's supposed to send it, it's being asked by this process, by that button click to send it, it will send uh, the image. So you've got a, a thread right here. Uh, PyChart class creates that thread, keeps everything global. Uh, starts the thread, also kills the thread uh, when, you know, end of game. And, um, you know, the, the, the thread is what is responding to, you know, obviously these um, uh, tasks. So uh, what you'll see in here is we convert that uh, image buffer and then we set it on that thread. So that's how I'm communicating from the pie chart class to the thread. So let's see if we can get this thing up and running. We'll do our logs. We hit play. Okay, so uh, also this little guy's got a behavior tree on it. Uh, and it's just randomly going around and uh, taking pictures uh, uh, in the thread and it's communicating uh, to let's see which one yeah it's communicating to the server and it's like what do you want me to do and the server what we can do what you'll see over here is we're we're sending rotate commands and uh, this object isn't going to respond to that but it's receiving them, and that's what this is all about. So, uh, the, you know, he, the little dudes, he's moving around. I don't know where he is now. Uh, but what we can, there he is. So what we could do is we uh, click on send image command. This guy receives it. He has the uh, these images cached, uh, not in real time, every second or so. And then he sends them. And then what we do is, that's what it was looking at, at that point in time. So this isn't a direct video, you know, feed or anything like that. We don't need that. Um, with with this code right now, with a little bit more polish, uh, now we have the capability, since we're in the server, uh, to run a uh, image, you know, run a machine a, a, a model on it that maybe it recognizes something. I haven't gotten that far yet. I, I can I can do those kinds of models, but obviously the models are going to have to be trained, and they're going to need images to train on. So the idea is modify the server code. 
and periodically he's going to go through and he's going to send um, uh, he's going to send commands to this character you know give me an image uh, he's going to time and date stamp stamp it and push it off into a corner and then he can uh, uh, basically we can use that data later on uh, to train and for instance we might take a uh, very simple uh, uh, TensorFlow model that will recognize a ball this ball right here and we could actually generate those images uh, from all different kinds of angles and have a very simple model um, uh, a, a binary classifier that says okay it sees a ball it doesn't see a ball but what we're going to also want obviously is the uh, coordinates within the image of the ball and then maybe what we do is we send commands back to the um, uh, Pi character and say okay I want you to do something with that ball go touch it and then the ball goes away and you know something uh, but once you get the pipeline in, in place uh, then you can do a lot more interesting things and uh, uh, I d don't I don't want to do this inside uh, all this code inside of Unreal I want to train my models outside of Unreal and then uh, load those models eventually uh, into Unreal w with the TensorFlow plugin, and then the in the inference time, the plugin will. Let's see if we can do this real quick. Probably can't. Yeah. During inference time, you know, it's it's using machine learning. Uh, models inside of uh, Unreal. So, sorry for all the, the back and forth trying to control the thing. So when we do a stop uh, that's going to kill that thread uh, that was kind of important because it would lock up. Uh, the server uh, is still going to uh, run so I'm working on the code uh, right now uh, on the server uh, trying to figure out how to get a bunch of uh, you know commands you know what kind of commands do I want to send uh, to the uh, you know into the unreal environment but this is the boilerplate stuff that that works you know the this buffer conversion things like that obviously CV write um, command received you know send it back so um, this is just the I think this is Tinker or Ticker or whatever it is in, in Python. Uh, I might change this um, uh, server UI to uh, Py, uh, Python Arcade, which has some really nice uh, user interface. But it's really kind of the same thing, uh, other than it's a different, uh, uh, marginally different thread task. Uh, in the the server so I was kind of proud of myself getting this to work uh, I haven't um, uh, you know the next step now is to build a model uh, that will recognize something haven't figured out what I want to do yet uh, I've got experience with that and uh, I feel pretty comfortable doing that so what we'll do is build up the, in the next couple of videos, we'll build up an image set, uh, uh, show you how to train uh, a model with TensorFlow and Keras, and uh, get some predictions down, uh, see how it behaves. This is going to be external from Unreal. And then uh, once the model behaves relatively well, I will uh, load the model, uh, TensorFlow model, in, uh, actually Keras model, inside of the server and uh, modify the server code to where it's just asking for images, doing a prediction, uh, getting uh, a, a region of interest 
uh, put together and then calculating uh, where it wants the uh, you know the pi character to go uh, this pi character right now is uh, using this uh, pi char AI class which is uh, this let's see blueprint there it is nope that's not it that's the bulletin board okay AI event graph here's the event graph that's okay run the behavior tree so the AI runs the behavior tree you gotta forgive me I don't have it all uh, memorized uh, which one's the behavior tree they, uh, there we go and this is just the the, the AI <coughs> For a pi character, it just runs this behavior tree, which is random movement, move to it, wait, and then it comes back. So this part will be taking, uh, taken out, and the commands will be sent. Uh, this behavior tree won't be used anymore. The commands will be sent from kind of like a, a simple behavior AI behavior tree inside of the Python code okay once that's working externally then the uh, you'll see way back on some of my other videos uh, I took a Keras model converted it to TensorFlow and um, you know that isn't too hard to do then I will potentially look at loading that model into Unreal. So Unreal does have a TensorFlow plugin module, and then that will show the the entire loop. We won't be using this server code anymore. Uh, we'll probably go back to using a behavior tree inside of Unreal. And um, but it will call out to TensorFlow uh, what it needs to do. So I know that sounds like a bunch of crazy cycle babble, but um, with this code in place, this framework in place, a little bit more work. Now what we can do is throw together relatively simple pathfinding uh, demos in Unreal because we've got uh, the pie char we've got zero MQ sending the data uh, uh, over um, we can train the models basically uh, externally convert the models to tensorflow and then run the models inside of unreal and uh, now you've got you know computer vision uh, convolutional neural networks using Keras and tensorflow uh, inside of Unreal so that you know that's one of the goals you know the the other goal was obviously doing uh, some crude uh, character animation with TensorFlow uh, models and moving joints around so anyway that is uh, kind of the end of this demo uh, I figured I'd um, you know post this out that but I've had this code for working for a month uh, I just didn't get, get around doing a, a video hope you enjoyed it um, uh, let me know what you're interested in uh, thanks for if you watched all the way to the end you're awesome uh, talk to you next